Today in this lecture, we are going to talk about concepts related to effects of angiotensin 2 on renal blood flow and GFR glomerular filtration rate. As we have started discussing determinants of renal blood flow and we have discussed the effects of sympathetic nervous system, effects of norepinephrine, epinephrine and endothelin. Now it's the turn to discuss angiotensin 2. Now angiotensin 2 is basically a hormone and an autocoid because it is it is uh, formed in the systemic circulation and is released from the kidney as well. Now, angiotensin 2 effects are important in conditions in which the arterial pressure is low or there is severe depletion of blood volume. As we have discussed multiple times that the blood when enters the kidney at the, uh, at the renal artery, the arterial pressure is around 100 mm of mercury and as the blood moves around the vasculature, the renal vasculature, the arterial pressure keeps on decreasing and it keeps on decreasing and finally at the renal vein the arterial pressure is around 4 mm of mercury so from 100 mm of mercury at the renal artery it decreases to around 4 mm of mercury at the renal vein and the biggest decrease in the arterial pressure occurs at the afferent and efferent arterial now we discussed multiple times that when sympathetic nervous system activation activation occur or when release of norepinephrine epinephrine or endothelin occur they constrict the afferent arterial efferent arterial and they decrease the gfr as we discussed so many times that blood enters to, into the glomerular capillaries from the afferent arteriole and if constriction of this area occur and resistance to the blood flow increases the glomerular hydrostatic pressure falls and the filtration drops and hence there is a decrease in the gfr and these forces basically occur uh, basically uh, act as determinants of the gfr now these forces they are they are basically acting as determinants of the GFR but they in themselves they are dependent on the renal blood flow and blood flow has its own determinants. So when the arterial pressure has fallen due to <coughs> hemorrhage or due to volume de uh, depletion or due to decreased salt intake then in such conditions angiotensin 2 level increases in the blood and angiotensin 2 preferably act at the efferent arteriole at the efferent arteriole. Now when the angiotensin 2 act at this level, efferent arteriole, it basically increases the glomerular hydrostatic pressure because blood is entering into the glomerular capillaries but it cannot leave the efferent arteriole. So for a moment the GFR increases. We discussed that with the activation of sympathetic nervous system and with the release of norepinephrine and epinephrine there is constriction of the afferent arteriole and efferent arteriole and there is decrease in GFR. But with the angiotensin 2 there is a preferential constriction of the efferent arteriole only which basically decreases the blood flow because blood cannot move the blood flow decreases but the GFR increases because the blood is here the blood is, is slowly and gradually coming into the glomerular capillaries so the GFR increases the glomerular hydrostatic pressure momentarily increases although if the constriction at the efferent arteriole that is caused by the angiotensin 2 if it increases too much then then ultimately the GFR may fall, the glomerular hydrostatic pressure may fall but with slight release of angiotensin 2 and slight constriction of the efferent arteriole the blood flow decreases but the glomerular hydrostatic pressure increases and the GFR also increases. Now in our previous lectures this thing was discussed in great detail and we discussed that when the afferent arteriolar re resistance increases the blood flow decreases and the GFR also decreases. But when the efferent arteriolar resistance increases with slight increase in resistance, the GFR basically increases. It increases for a moment, but if the resistance increases too much, then there is a decrease in the GFR. On the other hand, with constriction of the afferent arteriole, even with slight constriction, even with slight decrease in the blood flow, the GFR suddenly starts dropping. Here the GFR initially increases. So, <clears throat> angiotensin is one of those substances which preferentially constrict the efferent arteriole or at this level, this is the efferent arteriole. Here we have the glomerular capillaries. So the role of angiotensin is to momentarily increase the GFR due to increase in the glomerular hydrostatic pressure and to decrease the blood flow as well. Now when the when the blood flow decreases, when the blood flow decreases, what happens is, now here, here is another diagram, the constriction occur at this level, at the efferent arteriole not at the afferent. So the angiotensin by constricting this area, it increases the pressure in this area, the filtration increases, the GFR increases, but as this area has been constricted, the resistance has been increased and the blood flow has been stopped. So the peritubular capillaries blood flow falls, the, the blood flow in the peritubular capillaries decreases, which leads to 
increased sodium reabsorption increased sodium and water reabsorption so what is the importance of this constriction of the efferent arteriole by the angiotensin 2 the importance is the importance is whenever the fall in arterial pressure occurs due to volume depletion or due to hemorrhage angiotensin 2 it will help it will help to restore the it will help to restore the gfr it will help to restore the gfr at the same time it will help in increase absorption of water and increase absorption of sodium and it will try to increase the volume of blood so angiotensin 2 will try to maintain the gfr it will try to maintain the gfr because the maintenance of gfr is important for this excretion of urea and creatinine and it will try to increase the reabsorption of sodium and water from the tubules into the peritubular capillaries because the reabsorption of sodium and water is important for maintaining the volume of blood hence the angiotensin 2 is basically trying to restore the arterial pressure it is trying to maintain the gfr and it is trying to maintain the amount of sodium in water in the blood so that's the importance of angiotensin 2 and we discussed that angiotensin 2 it is basically an autocoid is a, har and a hormone as well so it is uh, formed in the uh, systemic um, vessels and it is released from the kidney as well and that's basically an auto regulation of the gfr that is an auto regulation of the gfr by the kidney itself so that's all about the importance of angiotensin 2 is a determinant of the renal blood flow is a determinant of the gfr thanks a lot for watching the video